Oh my god. Programmet presenteras av betsafe.com. Ready? This is Marcus Korva with Studio MMA and MMA Nut, and we're here at the Hilton Hotel in Atlanta for UFC 145, and we're here with Keith Wisniewski. Did I pronounce that right? Yes, she did. Who's uh, fighting uh, Chris Clements. Are you uh, ready to go for Saturday? Uh, right now, I'm more focused on the weight cut than Saturday, but yeah, I feel like I'm prepared for the fight. And this is every fighter who's coming in here. You've got a few more days to go to the fight. UFC is obviously very, very good at keeping you guys busy with media and so on. How how difficult is it to to cut weight and try to smile and be friendly just like now? You know, I, I gotta confess the UFC treated me really well this time because uh, you know in prior fights I've had pictures and interviews and all kinds of different obligations and and I understand the necessity for that, but in this particular event uh, I don't have any obligations until the weigh-ins Friday, so I'm here voluntarily talking to you guys. But uh, <laughs> the UFC didn't put me up to anything, so I uh, appreciate it. I can totally focus on getting my weight down and being ready for the fight. Now, being on the road, being in a new city, um, and 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 living in a hotel, how hard is it to find the type of food that you need in order to to cut that weight? You know, I I definitely prefer being able to cook my own food. It's uh, easier to eat healthy, uh, less uh, less temptation to uh, to stray from my diet. But you know, the last few days, you know, you're so strict, anyways, that uh, I'm doing all right. I'm looking forward to that big meal on Friday night, though. And you have, you're a veteran in the sport, so it's not the first time you're cutting weight. You know, you've got close to, what, 40 fights? 42 fights, I think? Uh, probably close to 50 if you include amateur. So you're one of the few professional fighters that actually did have an amateur career? Uh, a little bit of one, yeah. <laughs> an official one? You know, when I first got into the sport in 98, the difference between a pro and amateur fight, uh, there really wasn't much difference. I mean, there were amateur fights where I got paid more than I got paid for fights that are listed as pro. Uh, I have fights that are listed as pro on my record where you couldn't uh, you couldn't hit the head with a closed fist, kind of like old Pancras rules. Right, right. Uh, the Chicago area where I'm from is was notorious for uh, for not allowing closed fist strikes on the ground. So I probably have eight to ten pro fights on my record, maybe not that many, but five or six at least where they were slap fights, you know, on the ground, <laughs> but counted as pro fights on my record apparently. So you know, being a pro since did you turn officially turn pro, pro in 2000? Uh, probably 98, 99. I couldn't tell you for sure before 2000. Um, but I couldn't tell you exactly. Probably 98. And you're fighting someone with a lot less fights than yourself. Um, 14 professional fights. Now, what do you know about your opponent and what's, what's the uh, game plan, so to speak? Uh, I'm fighting Chris Clements. Uh, he's a Canadian fighter. Um, he's, uh, well, he hasn't fought in the UFC. He's fought some, for some bigger shows, especially right. in the Canadian circuit. Um, trains with some really good people. Uh, very heavy-handed, explosive, a little bit shorter than me. Um, he's won all 11 of his fights by knockout. So I'm guessing when he puts his hands on you, it tends to put people to sleep. And uh, the plan is to perhaps take him down? Well, the plan is not to go to sleep, if at all <laughs> possible. Uh, you know, as far as takedowns go, I mean, I... I'm I'm very good on top when I get takedowns and and I'm pretty effective at, at getting takedowns. But I, I don't like to go into a fight. You know, I have to take this fight to the ground. I have to take this fight to the ground. Um, I'm gonna have a reach advantage on him. I right. feel like I'll be okay standing up with him. Uh, if I'm winning that battle, I may keep it there. If I'm losing that battle, I may look to go to the ground. Just kind of play it by ear. And it's pretty nice to to have that option, right? To first of all, it's having the reach, and then if it comes to it, it you can take the fight to the ground. Well, at least hopefully I can take the fight to the ground. <laughs> you know, I, I suspect if he's getting the better of the stand-up, he's probably going to try to avoid that. But, uh, but yeah, it's well to, it's good to be well-versed in, in all areas of the fight, you know, where you're comfortable going for that takedown if you need it. You're comfortable stalling and brawling if that's working for you. You know, uh, for me, I, I'd say I'm about 33% at, at each facet of the game plan, you know, on the mat, takedowns, and, and striking. So Now – you're such a veteran in the sport. I actually don't think there's many people that we've spoken to that have been in the sport professionally since 98, 99. Um, this is your third fight in the UFC, correct? That's correct. What took you so long to get into the UFC? Well, you know, I actually fought in 2004 in the UFC, so I, I had a long hiatus uh, outside the UFC. It's still, I still was about 30 fights into my career before I, I broke into the UFC. You know, I, my brother and I are self-trained. We started in our in our front yard, and we jumped around a couple gyms. Then we opened our own gym. We've had our own gym for about 10, 11 years now, at least, maybe 12. Um, 
And it's just, it's hard when you don't have a manager and you don't come from, you know, back when I was starting, it was Lion's Den and, and Militich and AMC. Uh, you know, a lot of those gyms aren't, you aren't even, I mean, no offense to them, they're still, especially Militich, is, I still have a ton of respect for that gym. But when, when I came into the sport, the people that were dominating the sport aren't quite the very top level competitors anymore. There's, there's new gyms that have come in, but it, it's still the same thing where it helps to have a good manager and connections to, to make that jump up in competition. Absolutely, we see you know we see guys coming into the UFC now with five six fights, and uh, according to some, you know they might not be the right person to get into the or the ones that deserved it the most, yeah, and, and then we see someone like yourself, you know, with with so many fights, been around the game for so long, and with a very good record, um, it's it's it seems to be just as much sometimes about business and promotion as it is about the level of the fighter. Um, have you got a manager now? Uh, I, I do, although I, I don't have some, you know, big shot, you know, connected manager. I got a buddy of mine from Chicago who, who handles me very well. I, I, I enjoy working with him, but I try to avoid the, uh, you know, the guys that have 50 clients and I don't know. I, I don't want to give them 20% of the money I make. You know? <laughs> I feel like my sweat should go into my pocket or at least someone I trust and, and who's working for me. And uh, you mentioned previously about the gyms. We've seen the Lions Den, the Pat Militage to to it, not just a new era of fighters like you said it's a new era of, of gyms as well from obviously now with saturday coming up greg jackson's uh, we we see aka att all these gyms and, and kings and 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 black house how is it that it goes in eras not just with fighters but also with gyms you know i once once i in my opinion at least i think once a few fighters really make it big and start to have a lot of success other fighters who are aspiring to get there migrate to that area. I think that's a lot of what's happened at Jackson's. You know, I, he's he's put some, you know, obviously they're doing something right there. They're training hard, uh, but probably got a few talented guys in there. A couple of them broke through, and then it became like a hotbed for that area. So people from that area would start driving an hour or two hours. So you'd have the best athletes from that area driving two hours to go there, and pretty soon you had a couple more big names and people like, well, I'll fly there. I'll move there because they're that good. That's the way it was with Militich. I mean, you got a guy right. like Sylvia who won the heavyweight title, who migrated from Maine to Iowa, you know, just to train with them. And Hughes, same way Hughes was from Illinois, migrated there to train with them. Jeremy Horn was had traveled all over the country, but, you know, migrated there to train. So, you know, it's not so much that these people from this one city are all that great, but that once a gym really takes off, people m will migrate to that place to train. So would you say that it's more about, it's obviously a good coach, but more about the sparring that you get in the gym than the actual gym in itself? I, I strongly believe that, that training partners is the most important part of getting ready for a fight. I mean, nothing against the coach. Uh, right. I, I think that's, an, uh, you know, an, and also having good corner work is important in when you're actually in the ring, but uh, nothing is even close to as important as training partners. If you don't have guys that can push you in the gym, then you're going to have trouble getting up for a fight. So now you starting in the front, front yard with your brother, to opening your own gym, how do you go about it? Obviously, the sport is growing, and, and I know there's a lot, of ton, ton of good wrestlers in Chicago. But do you bring guys in? Do you pay for sparring, or how do you do it? Uh, no, no, we definitely don't bring guys in. We've we're kind of, I guess that model I'm talking about, where we got guys starting to take off, and then more people are starting to come in because because our gyms getting more reputable. Uh, we're kind of following that model, and uh, in my opinion, I I think we're quite possibly the top gym in Indiana, which. You know, maybe to world world audience, that's not a huge achievement. But there are some pretty good fight gyms in the Chicago area right. and in Northwest Indiana and throughout the state. And uh, and I definitely think if we're not the best, we're among the best. We got uh, myself, who's, who's UFC signed, Darren Elkins, who who I think's becoming a cont contender at 45. Uh, Josh Shockley, who who I think will vie for the Bellator 55 yeah. pound title. We had Mark Birch, who's retired now, but. And we have some pretty talented fighters, and uh, we also have a cusp of amateurs coming up that I really think are going to make a dent in the sport as well. So we see Keith, the professional fighter, but we also see Keith, the gym owner, and, and obviously business owner because of that, and the coach too. Do you manage as well? Uh, you know, I used to manage almost all the guys at the gym, and, and it became almost too much work. I, I was kind of a coach as well, and the same thing. It's, it's a conflict of interest to get ready for a fight and coach at the same time. So... I still do some coaching, but my brother, Justin, who's retired now, does most of the coaching. He's a former fighter, but uh, he's the head coach of the gym. And uh, as far as management, our top guys, a couple of them signed with MMA agents, um, Darren Elkins did and Josh Shockley. 
uh, John Gorecki manages me, and then the rest of our guys, I kind of help them out, you know. I guess I'm sort of like a manager to them, but I don't take a percentage or anything, and technically I would say they're self-managed or just with me as a consultant. So perhaps more of a mentor? I definitely have connections for how long I've been in the sport. So, you know, guys just getting into the sport, you know, it's it's hard for them to know who to call and which fights to take. So, so yeah, I guess I do act in that capacity. Now... 50 plus fights potentially do you still get nervous when you walk out of there uh yeah i mean i i think every fighter gets nervous every fight i, I would i'd be shocked to hear anyone say different um i mean it's still just a day at the office you know it's my job and you know but but yeah i'm nervous there's always butterflies and and definitely the sleep pattern changes the week of the fight i wish it didn't <laughs> but but i definitely don't sleep as well the week of a fight what do you do when you're not getting ready for a fight? You do not, for example, look like a fighter. We see all the guys all tattered up, big cauliflower ears, shaved heads. You've got pretty short hair, but, you know, you could as well have just been working at Bank of America. Uh, yeah, a little bit of cauliflower ear. I'm proud of that, but no <laughs> no tattoos. And, uh, I'd, yeah, I, uh, I'm a pretty laid-back guy. I like to read. I um, enjoy going to the movies. I really like outdoor stuff. Uh, I'm into whitewater kayaking and rafting. Uh, I like rock climbing. Bought a harness a couple of years ago and rope. Does, does Dana White know that? Uh, I don't know. I never <laughs> never really ran it by him. <laughs> actually, I, I think quite a few of the fighters uh, on the circuit are into the rock climbing. It's actually a pretty good workout. Um, but uh, It's also very dangerous. It, it can be. I, I think rock climbing is one of the least dangerous hobbies I have. I think fighting is considerably more dangerous. I think whitewater kayaking and rafting are considerably more dangerous. You right. know, rock climbing is one of those sports that, unless you're free climbing, which I don't free climb, it's it's all where I'm tied off. and uh, It's not free climbing, Dana. Okay. So. You know, it's a it's a sport that appears scary, and if you take a guy out the first time, I mean, and they're 40, 50 feet off the ground, which isn't that high, but when they get that high and they're having to make some difficult moves, it's a terribly scary experience. But the actual physical danger of falling is very, very low. You know, I, I'm trying to find some wood to knock on here, but uh, <laughs> but no, I, those ropes just really don't break. And um, for people that want to find you, whether they're in Indiana or online, uh, yeah, I'm located in Northwest Indiana, uh, Hobart, Indiana is the city I'm in. Uh, really, the, the best way to find me is Facebook. Uh, you can, my, Keith Wisnowski on Facebook, and then uh, also there's a Doonland Valley Tudo, uh, which is my gym's website. It might be easier to find me and, and reference Doonland Valley Tudo. But uh, feel free to hit me up on there if you're if you're in the area and want to train, or, or even if you're visiting and want to train for a day or two, come on out. I feel that we won't get one, but any predictions for Saturday night? Well, I, like every fighter, I, I intend to win. Um, I'm <laughs> sure when you ask Chris, he's going to answer the same. So just hopefully a good fight and a good show and uh, lots of Irish car bombs to celebrate. <laughs> and then for the main event, this is one of the most hyped fights of the year. And uh, obviously it's been a lot of media attention on that. Um, any, any predictions on that one? You know, I, I'm probably going to be in the locker room with one of those two guys. And uh, I hate to pick against them since I'm going to be seeing them. <laughs> I, I really respect both fighters. I think it's an right. exciting fight. Um, I do think Jones' reach could be an issue. I mean, you're talking about probably a six, five, six inch height differential between those two, which which makes for an awkward fight. Um, yeah. But yeah, to pick a winner, I I, I couldn't tell you. I, money's staying in the pocket on this one, no bet. <laughs> Thank you, Keith, for coming out. Looking forward to seeing you on Saturday night, right here in Atlanta. Oh my God. Programmet presenteras av betsafe.com.